Hey everyone, welcome back again. Today's video is on having a balanced life. It's when life is good, life is bad, maybe it's a little sideways on us. Um, I'm here with David Teal. He is the executive pastor here at Trustful First United Methodist Church. Dr. Stephen Strange, he is our senior pastor here at Trustful First United Methodist Church. And my name is Shannon, I'm the recovery pastor here at Trustful First United Methodist Church. So before we get started, would you like to pray us in? Yeah. God, we just thank you for this time that we come together. God, we just pray over this conversation as we look at what does it mean to balance life. And God, I'm not so sure that we <laughs> are the ones that should even be leading this, but I think everybody finds themselves in um, that boat um, that is off balance and off keel a lot of times. And so, God, I just pray that through this, we will find a way and talk about how to balance our lives, to balance them so that we are balancing the spiritual with also the physical and the mental and, and, and also balancing our soul. God, we want to be holistic in every sense of the matter. And so, God, I just pray as we talk about balance. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So in life, we have many seasons, and I think there's actually a song in every season turn. Yeah. Uh, but in our spiritual lives, the seasons may include a dry season, uh, a season of waiting. You hear people say, praise him in the hallway while you're waiting for a door to open. Uh, the grinding season, there's a test and a trial season. There's spiritual warfare season. And then a season of, of happy and joy. So looking at a dry season, my first thought is those are tough. It's almost like I can't hear God. I'm talking, but I don't hear anything. Mm. It's probably because I'm talking too much and I need to hush and listen. <laughs> but um, I think of, of a time where there's unanswered prayers mm -hmm. and people are just waiting for any ounce of knowledge they may get from God. Right. Um, I also think of that as being a maybe a transition season. Mm -hmm. I've heard people say before the teacher is quiet during the test, you know, waiting to see what we're going to do. Are we going to stand in obedience or are we going to do whatever we want to? Mm. So have you experienced a dry season? Mm. I think one of the things I was thinking about is, is Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones and thinking about this not necessarily in, in, in terms of my life, because we always have dry seasons, but even that in the, the life of churches in different places. Mm -hmm. I think about the struggle right now um, for smaller congregations mm -hmm. in the in the midst of this um, pandemic and, and what's going on because, um, you know, they may have already seen decline and, and death and other stuff, and so they're just really in that 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 dry season I'll, t I'll tell you man there have even been dry seasons in my ministry things where i felt like and it may even look from the outside like everything's going okay but the truth is that we're dry the mm -hmm. truth is that we're we're tired the truth is that for for whatever reason god's not speaking to us as loud as he was before or maybe we're not listening, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. But, yeah, I think we've all been through those, you know, dry, tough seasons. Definitely. Like you're the well and you draw the water and you drink the water, but it doesn't quench the thirst like mm -hmm. it did before. Mm -hmm. You're trying to figure out, wait, what happened? This always works. So, right. Yeah. And I think about, too, the season between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh -huh. Was it 400 years? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Of just quiet. Mm -hmm. And I can only imagine, like, how many generations of children came through and how far did they drift from God mm -hmm. before all of a sudden? And I know it, it wasn't like, okay, blink and Jesus is, is in his 30s. Right, you know, there was right. a, a season there too. But, mm -hmm. but that's where we see the skip of the mm -hmm. quiet. Mm -hmm. So um, from dry season, there's also a waiting season. You might hear God, but you're still in a, a, like a learning curve. Maybe oh. still a transition season. Um, but we also have to be careful in the waiting season that we don't get in God's way. Right. Because we're so ready. Uh -huh. Like he's given us a little bit of a vision or like mm -hmm. I said, a, a, a taste of the water. Yeah. You know, just a little bit to quench our thirst, but we want more. Um, but we're so quick to jump. Mm -hmm. 
and we accidentally get in his way. Yeah. And we are the ones that throw things off, and then mm-hmm. he has to work everything back into the plan mm-hmm. because because we're just stupid. We're just. Yeah. I mean, we don't like to wait. We don't like yeah. to wait. <laughs> That's why everything's fast. Fast yes. food, right? Fast service. Uh, right. We want faster internet. We want everything to be yeah. fast and quickly and, and be able to move on to the next thing. We don't like to wait. Mm-mm. Like long lines drive us crazy. And now you have to wait to get now into you stores. Have to wait. Yeah. Yeah, we want everything at our fingertips. I mean, that's why we have all uh-huh. the gadgets. Mm-hmm. We want to be able to connect immediately so that we can get on with our agenda. Right. But then that takes us into that that grinding season mm-hmm. when all of a sudden everything gets busy. Yes. And you feel like you can't breathe, uh-huh. almost like you're drowning. Yes. And you're just like, I can't get everything done. How did I do this before? Uh-huh. Well, you didn't have all those projects that you took on yourself. Yeah, you know? Right, right, right. You weren't busy like that before because you brought this onto yourself. So I think many seasons we bring on ourselves. Oh, definitely. And it causes us problems and issues. We say yes too much. Too much. Yes. We should say no a few times. Like, no, I don't think I can do that. I've only got so many hours in the day. I've got yeah. so much energy. I can only do so much myself. Yeah. I think in the grinding season, it's also a time where you've got to learn to delegate. And I yes. think that's one of the hardest problems. Mm-hmm. And I, I've seen this in ministry now that I've been in it over 20 years. And ministry is that people just continue the grind to grind to grind till they've burned Mm -hmm. and and then they go back to the dry season um because they you know they didn't say no enough to do what we talked about last to do the self-inventory to Mm -hmm. take care of themselves Mm -hmm. and so i think so often the grinding season it's grueling on you Mm -hmm. and and this to me is the the make or break season, even yeah. though things may be going great. I mean, they may right. be rocking, but at this time you take yourself out of what you also are healthy living. Mm-hmm. You know, you're so busy, you know, David and I talk about this all the time that sometimes we'll meet with staff members and we'll tell them, um, you're going to have to delegate some mm-hmm. because you got 30 plates you're spinning right. and five of them are getting ready to fall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you can't do and, it all. and you can't do it. And, mm-hmm. and if you don't do it that way, um, then it's either going to break you or break those ministries yeah. that mm-hmm. are important to you. Mm-hmm. You know, Definitely. Um, so. And we also know like in the life of the church, there's those seasons that we're grinding <laughs> like uh, Advent, Christmas, oh, yeah. Lent and Easter. Those are the two things we can hang our hat on. Yeah. So we know that before and after each of those seasons, we've got to make sure we have some form of downtime. We're not adding a lot of extra stuff. Mm-hmm. Like this, after Easter, I don't think we got big plans of we're going to do something major the next week. Right. We're kind of lowering yeah. it. Yeah. And I think this time uh, with the, the, the COVID, it really has been a grinding season, even though that people are like um, – mm-hmm. Some people are at home and stuff, but we're having to be very creative on how we get the word and other mm-hmm. stuff out. And it seems like we're doing, we, we, we constantly, and we have been able to delegate some stuff, mm-hmm. but it's, even though it's been a different time for Holy Week and everything, it's still kind of been to the grind yeah. on a lot of stuff. And we've had a lot of people um, that, that have worked hard yes. to make sure all this stuff mm-hmm. happens, you know. And I think to our families, when we hit, the grind season. I know when my son was little, I had him involved in martial arts. So he started um, right before he turned five and he finished up when he was 15. Oh, wow. So that's a long time to be involved. But I remember the nights of me running from home, going by the daycare, the after school care to, to pick him up. We would run through a drive through. He uh-huh. would eat, hoping he got nothing on his uniform. We're running into Taekwondo. We spend hour and a half, two hours there. We leave, he's starving. We're going back through another drive through uh-huh. So I got to looking at it. Our home time was only weekends. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. by the time you got home at night, you uh-huh. were so tired you crashed. Yeah. There was no time for anything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Which, now, bless, this, his, bless his heart, he's, he's that's his lifestyle. Yeah. I've made him yeah. busy. You trained him. I trained yeah. him busy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he enjoys it. He likes being busy like I do, but he's having to learn the downtime. Mm-hmm. Which is a good, which is a good side effect of the whole coronavirus right now. Mm-hmm. We're all having to pull back because we can't do all the yeah. normal things we would do with our families, and hopefully it gives us a time to kind of reevaluate. And say, is it really all worth it to yeah. keep ourselves constantly grinding? You you talked about it for over ten years, this constant thing, and, and then families that have multiple children and multiple sports, they're going 10, 15, 20 years of doing this or more. Mm-hmm. 
And then they're just exhausted by the end of it all. And it's like, well, what did, what do they really get out of that kind of a life? Mm-hmm. They, they're probably not able to be their, their best selves. They're probably not able to show up and be fully present in the moment because they're always exhausted from the constant mm-hmm. grind. That reminds me of a, a couple that came to me for counseling. And it, it was really funny because they had never really done any counseling, but they come after their kids are out of the house. And I said, well, what's what's wrong? And they said, well, we, we just don't like each other. <laughs> and I was like, well, what do you mean? You've been married for, yeah. you raised all these kids. And they said, well, we were so busy yeah. that we never knew how to be with one another. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, then y'all are going to have to learn that. Oh, yeah. yeah. He said, you're going to have to learn. And, and I think sometimes the grind gives a lot of satisfaction so we keep doing it. Oh, yeah. You see know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. It, we feel more productive in the grind season than any other time. But at some point, you know, if you keep running and burning from both ends, it's mm-hmm. done. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, um, the you know, I, I wouldn't trade the martial arts for anything because of the discipline. Yeah. yeah. So at 15 when he said, um, I don't want to do this anymore, it's like, okay. Yeah. I'm good with that, you yeah. know, because I didn't want to be one of those parents that pushed them just because I wanted, you uh-huh. know, like, okay, we're good with this. Uh-huh. So he um, decided to play high school sports. <laughs> the first thing he said to me um, was, these kids are brats. Oh, wow. Because there was no discipline. Yeah. There was no structure yeah. like he was used to. Uh-huh. And so he didn't play high school sports long because what his normal was was not there anymore. Yeah. Of course, now, like I said, he's busy and all, um, but he's learned a balance. Uh His balance is his time, which is like getting on the lake, the quiet time. He's learning quiet time. Um, So that has been an amazing thing to watch him learn and grow, grow into those seasons Mm -hmm. and to know when to check himself. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is too much. I got to step back. Uh, I think one of the hardest seasons, well, there's two. I think the test and the trial is hard. Mm Mm-hmm. Because for me, that's a season when my heart's telling me one thing, my brain's telling me something else. And I know that that my heart is the Holy Spirit, but logically I've thought it all out and I've done my math. (laughs) So I I think this will work, but yet I know my heart's the Holy Spirit, but God's not telling me either way. Uh It's like, I need you to do this. Uh-huh. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lay the man out and let uh-huh. you follow the trail. Yeah. I need to see which way you go. Yeah. That's a hard one for me mm-hmm. because I get into where. Um, what if? What if I fail? What if I don't mm-hmm. do this? What if I? So the fear becomes a, a real factor. And then I oftentimes in my trials and my tests is usually when I'm going through a storm. Mm-hmm. The storm is not crashing down on me. But it's almost like how you can see, like if you're on a boat and you can see the waves start getting higher and higher and the, and the clouds are coming in, uh-huh. you know what's coming. Right. <laughs> For me, that's a test in a trial season. Mm-hmm. So um, what advice would you give somebody that feels like they're in a, a test or a trial season where maybe fear is trying to sit in? I always go back to that uh, hymn, and I can't remember if his name's Charles or Albert, but Tenley's his last name. And he wrote two, a few hymns that are in hymnal, but uh, one of them is, When the Storms of Life Are Raging, Stand By Me. And um, every time I'm, I feel like I'm in a storm or a test or a trial, those words come back to me like, just remember who's with you. Yeah. I mean, God may not speak to you in that time. God may not show you the way out, but God's with you. And God yeah. will stand with you in the storm. And just know that gives you some comfort. I think just just like for children, whenever they're frightened or afraid, their parents can can make them feel safe again, yeah. can make them feel like it's going to be okay no matter what's happening. Like if there's a, a literal uh, the thunderstorm outside and they're afraid, just being in mom and dad's arms, knowing it's going to be okay. Yeah. The storm's still happening, but it's going to be okay. You're yeah, when you hear through. those little fat feet running yeah. through the hall or yeah, something. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> And they lunge right, at you. Right. Yeah, that's how we need to do with Jesus. Yes. <laughs> I think for me on that one, what works best is remembering Jesus's trial and mm-hmm. test in the in the desert, and and that what he did was he held on to Scripture. Mm-hmm. You know, just like song and Scripture, those two. That's why we do that. You come to worship to worship, but you also take something with you right. and you take the songs mm-hmm. that give you comfort. You take the scripture that gives you comfort. 
your own quiet time ought to, ought to lend itself to giving you something you need or a nugget you're going to need coming up. I always tell people, if you approach the scripture with not as it's something I have to do, but there's going to be something I need, you'll approach it totally different. Mm-hmm. You're, the reason yeah. you're getting there. And and I think that's what Jesus did in this in this trial and test, you know. So And remember how he how he talked with authority to the enemy. Mm-hmm. When he's like, if you bow to me, I'll give you, and he just kept, you know, like Upping the ante, right, just like, right. dude, it's mine. Yeah, you, there's yeah. nothing you can give me. Uh, I mean, I, my father has already given this. You, you have nothing that. I which mean, was a great uh, insight of self awareness yes. Jesus had about himself and his relationship with God. That that ultimately mattered more than anything else. Absolutely. Yeah. And and when we know who we are because of whose we are, right. we have the same authority to speak to the enemy and tell him mm-hmm. he has no power over right. us. Mm-hmm. And I've seen so many that once they realized that and they did it, uh-huh. they're like, okay, he, he could throw a lot at me, mm-hmm. but he still can't take me under. That's I'm right. still God's. Uh-huh. That's right. Yes. God yes. is still in control. Yes. Um, when I look at balancing life, I think of there's the first part of Psalm 63, um, praise God whom satisfies. And the first is, God, you are my God. I seek you eagerly. I thirst for you. My body faints for you in the land that is dry and desolate and without water. Well, I mean, my goodness, I think we can, there's many times in our lives when that's the land we've been Mm -hmm. in. But yet, we still seek. We still need to keep striving to follow, to see, to listen, Mm -hmm. and uh, be in in obedience that he has for our life. Mm -hmm. So the next season after trial, um, test and trial, is spiritual warfare. This is when we feel physically attacked. Mm -hmm. Many times. Mm -hmm. Everything goes wrong. Everything's falling apart. But it's also the the biggest part of our flesh struggle Mm -hmm. is that spiritual battle. When you're on the front line and you are just being beat left and right, like, Everything you're trying to turn from, Mm -hmm. that's addiction, Mm -hmm. whether it's gambling, porn, whatever, Mm -hmm. unfortunately, this has it all on it at the touch of our fingers. Mm -hmm. And so the spiritual warfare is always at our front door. The wolves are always there waiting Mm -hmm. for the opportunity to come in. So many of you may feel like you're in a season of of trials or tests or spiritual warfare. The best encouragement is to remember, and I think David, you and I talked about this previously, is that uh, we don't have it as bad as Job. Yeah. yeah. Look back at Job. Yeah. yeah. Uh, definitely do not, have not gone through the extent of everything he went through. Mm. There are many areas we can relate to. There are many areas we may feel that hurt and that abandonment and that everything. But God never leaves us. Never. We may walk away from him, but he never walks away from us. So in spiritual warfare, when someone feels like they're right there in the grips, like, like they're exhausted, they spiritually cannot fight any longer. What it kind of encouragement or maybe speaking to someone who is trying to stand in that spiritual gap for someone else? Mm-hmm. Um, what kind of encouragement would you give when that front line of the battle is just raging? I think one thing I'd say is just remember your support network and mm-hmm. think about the people who can help you through that that trial, that challenge, that spiritual warfare. Um, and I love the terminology. I shared this in our, one of our videos we did before with the F3 Nation. And one of the things yes. I say is uh, leave no man where you found him and leave no man behind. Mm-hmm. I think that can be so vitally true for us in our spiritual walk and when we're in spiritual warfare. Just remember, you know, we've got our comrades that are in this yeah. with us. And if we stumble, we're falling, we can't pick ourselves up. They'll carry us. If we just reach out and let them yeah. know, I can't do this, they'll be there for us and they'll help us through it. So I think that, and then also, of course, just the constant prayer, the constant connection with God. Keep on pouring out your heart to God. God's listening. You may not you may not realize it or believe it at the moment, but God is hearing you. And just trying to, as you're getting it out, I think, 
it helps you to realize that mm -hmm. you're not going through this alone. It may feel like it, but mm -hmm. God's with you. Your support network is with you, and you'll get through the the other side of the spiritual warfare if you just stick in there with God and with with your uh, support group. I think that's also a time when, um, um, for me, when I feel like I'm on the front line of the battle, it's usually right before doors fixing open. Uh -huh. To me, it kind of feels like, am I going to stand here and take everything that the enemy's throwing at me, or am I going to step out of the line of fire? Uh -huh. Well, if I step out of the line of fire, I'm stepping away from the door that's fixing open. Mm -hmm. So I try to keep that in mind, too. Mm -hmm. Um that I have to stand in obedience, mm -hmm. that the direct hits I'm taking are not going to take me out. Right. I don't check out until God checks me out. Mm -hmm. So I try to remember too, that door's going to open. I don't know. I don't know time, place, or right. when, what's right. going on, but I know that God has plans for each of us. And if he brought me to there, that's where I need to be. Mm -hmm. And then once that door opens, it takes us into the final season which is the happy season, oh, yeah. the joy, yeah, the uh, my cup runneth over uh -huh. season. <laughs> um, it's time to celebrate. It is definitely. I mean, even if it's not our happy season, we rejoice with others yes. because they've came through something, mm -hmm. and their story could be our story one day. Yeah. We just stick with it, so it gives us hope that hey, they made it, I yeah. can make it too. Yeah, because uh, down the road. You know, where we help someone out now, down the road, they may be the only ones uh -huh. that know enough about our situation to come to our rescue. Right. Jesus sends to them to us mm -hmm. to be that physical body. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're going to experience a lot of after all this is over. Right. We're going to experience that coming back together and, and sharing the trials and tests. Mm -hmm. But we're going to be in such a happy season and a rejoice and a praise Um that I just kind of feel like once we do start those praise and worship and the hymnal songs, that there's going to be such a loud voice. We're going to shake the rafters of heaven. Yeah. You know, that all those voices uh -huh. become one uh -huh. and they become so loud. So in a, in a happy season, do you have any, um, anything you look back on that even if, as you remember it, it just kind of brings a smile I know one for me was um, when I met a lady in the jail. And it's funny to hear, you know, people say, oh, I met so-and-so in jail. But she didn't want none of my jail Jesus. She said he ain't real. He don't work. But she wanted the little Debbie cake and she wanted the little Gatorade. <laughs> so I stood right there by her doorway and she heard everything that was said. Now she works as a peer counselor. And she's involved in CR and in leadership. And, you know, so it's when I think about, when I hear people talk about where they were in jail, I instantly think about her and how she did repent. She went through her recovery. She went through her self-care, her inventory. And now she helps others walk that journey. Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. And so that that's one of my stories that mm -hmm. I think about that I get a little smirky grin and people are like, <laughs> what? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all have some of those stories? I think for me, the the happy season is seeing when, it's kind of like what you were saying, but you, you see the light bulb go on because I think we have so many people, and, and especially in, the, in the, the buckle of the Bible belt that have been raised in church and they're around church and they're around God and they're around but they don't really know. And it's so amazing to watch the light come on. And you always know when the light comes on and, and when they're in this season, because a happy season is also a, 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 a season where you learn to serve to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily just rejoicing that you've arrived. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's trying to help someone else get to where you are. Now they may never get, totally there. Mm -hmm. I got that. But it's bringing them out of, you know, the, the scripture talks about the depths and the miry, bringing them out of the muck, bringing mm -hmm. them out of that, watching them come out. You know, I had a, I've told you this story just, just a few months ago, uh, you know, watching somebody come forward 
to get a chip to receive this chip and their kids sitting there cheering on their mom. Yeah. And I thought, what a happy season. Because I thought back, what was their dry season, yeah. their waiting season, their grinding season, and all this. And it just came to a head that night. Now, the only thing you got to do is you also got to realize that it's a season. Yes. yes. That's the word right. behind it. Right. You know, and so, you, you know, if you try to celebrate only that for too long, you may not get to another celebration. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, you know, one of the things that it, it is tough well, you kinda go with back. that. You said it reminds you of like churches that are stuck and they're thinking about their heyday back in the 60s yeah. or 70s or 80s. They never can get beyond that because right. they're always trying to stay right through with that. Yeah. No. And, you, and David and I talk about that all the time, mm-hmm. that, 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 that the only thing that's constant is change. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, right. it is. Right. And I mean, it, that's so hard for people to get to and understand, mm-hmm. you know, I, I I love what was said one day, and and um, we were in a small group in a youth ministry seminar, and we happened to be in there with Louis Giglio. Louis Giglio was our speaker, and somebody raised their hand and they said, "Well, you know, this rap music they use and this grunge music they use for Jesus, how can that even be possible?" and I love what he said. He said, because God gave them those yes. words. He didn't give them to you. That's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. We don't know what God's doing, what he's going to do. I got it. Yeah. I yeah. may not need it, uh-huh. yeah. but somebody needs it. Right. And so who am I to say, you know, that's one of the funny things that we've always heard in church. Well, they got that kind of music or they uh-huh. got that yeah. kind of music. And I didn't really know that music had that much of a, but if you listen to the intent behind it, it's not necessarily what the music is. What was it written with the intent of uh-huh. doing? And I, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying, that, that it's going to change. You've got to be aware with this balance thing that uh, – to be totally balanced, you have to have the bad and the good. Uh-huh. Yeah. You cannot just have all bad or all good. Yeah, yeah and, and sometimes on Life's Highway, when you're sailing down that road, every once in a while you kind of fishtail a little bit. I love that. Uh-huh. You know, you just kind of, whoops. Good, bad, or sideways. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> sometimes people intentionally take the sideways because it's fun. Yeah. Uh, but you have to be very careful when you're reckless because uh-huh. uh, you can wreck. Yeah. <laughs> you can end up in a ditch. <laughs> but sometimes we do just you know, a slick spot in the road. Uh-huh. And it just kind of throws you a little bit uh-huh. and you, you you get the car back going and, and going straight. But I think that's how, you know, how we slip up too sometimes. We may be in a conversation where all of a sudden it didn't start out this way, but next thing you know, somebody's gossiping. Uh-huh. Well, that's a, fish, that's a fish tale. How yeah. are we going to handle it? How mm-hmm. are we going to pull the conversation back mm-hmm. uh, into a dignity and an honorable way? You can you can fill in the blanks on fish tail. Oh, yeah. You know, all the different ways. Yeah. The point is, how do you pull the car back in alignment with the road? How do you get back into obedient? Mm -hmm. Um, That's where our walk really speaks volumes to those around us Mm -hmm. that are watching how we handle life. Definitely. So, guys, this topic is uh, is balancing your life, the good, the bad, and the sideways, (laughs) where your car fishtails a little bit. So I hope you've uh, enjoyed this conversation. We would love to get some feedback. Maybe there's some topics you want to hear. We've got plenty of topics to cover, but we would definitely love your feedback. So before we finish, would you like to pray us out? Sure, let's pray. Christ God, we thank you for this opportunity we've had to have this faith talk on balancing life. And God, we know there's going to always be ups and downs in life. We know that things are going to go well for a season and Sometimes things are going to go awry in other seasons. And we just pray that you'll help us to keep the balance, to just remember even when we're going through a rough patch, it's not the end all that. There will be good and better days ahead if we just stay the course of you. Just continue to guide us through your Holy Spirit. For us in Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 So just remember to be a blessing, speak life, put your faith feet into action to cause a ripple effect. Until next time, much agape, everybody.